What up? Okay, super excited to talk about this topic. We're talking about possessing the ball. And I've titled this Possession Secrets because I really feel like these ideas are really like secrets to the game. Because possessing the ball when your opponent is trying to full out press you all the way to your goal, it can be challenging. Um, But I really believe in these ideas and these structures. I'm going to keep the video a little faster to the point. Maybe I'll make a longer video more detailed on this topic later. So let's get straight to it. Okay, possession. I have really just three bullet points for this idea. The first one, very simple. Uh, You want to be plus one on your back line when you're looking to possess. So identify... Uh, the amount of strikers the other team has. Are they playing a one-striker system or are they playing a two-striker system? It's pretty straightforward here. If it's one striker, your two center backs will do the job. And if they're coming at you with two strikers, you're going to need to drop down someone else. An outside back, usually a midfielder, will have to come down to give you numeric advantage so you have safety at least on your first line. Okay, so say you do that. Say you have a 2v1, one striker versus two center backs, and you're able to go through. Okay, how do you actually pass the ball through the other team as they're coming at you hard, pressing you? Here, I say it here. You have to find the 4v2 diamond on the field. What the heck am I talking about? I'm talking about this. Here it is. 4v2 diamond. Boom. Don't pay attention to... These position titles, really. Um, But here's the diamond. A staple of possession. So how does it work? Well, there's kind of three types of passes you can hit um, to beat the pressure in this 4v2 situation. So what are they? I have it here. A third-line pass, a second-line pass, a first-line pass. So what are these? Okay, third-line pass is when you just split the guys right here. Bang! right down the middle. Generally, uh, it's the best thing you can do, split the other team's pressure. Um, It's the quickest way to get down the field. All right, what is a second line pass? A second line pass is playing around the other team, going here, boom, putting a ball in front of them. You see, once we have the ball there very easily, we can get the ball to the top guy of the diamond. And finally, the last one, a first line pass when the other two aren't really available when you can't really split the other team or you can't play around them let's get rid of the lines here you can at least play whoops you can at least play just straight to the guy boom that's a first line pass so why would you ever do that you would do that to move the opponents the purpose of the game of soccer why do we pass not to move the ball but to move the opponents. So we hit this ball here. It draws this guy in. And maybe now on the pass back, now we can hit the third line pass. Or maybe we hit this ball in. Both the defenders shift over. And then if we go one touch, bang, bang, now we have the line two pass. So there you see, it's the 4v2 diamond. And there are a lot of ways to beat it depending on how these two guys are looking to press you the different angles they're giving you are they giving you an easy flat look are they giving you a diagonal line we could add a third defender into the mix and it's still possible you're still numerically advantaged here to work around this situation no matter how they're pressing it here you see a line one pass because the guy was coming down the middle boom boom we come into the space there line three pass so what does this look like on the big field Let's look. Okay. Here we are from a goal kick. Boom. We play the ball to a center back. The other team is in 4-1-4-1. So we're already plus one on the back line. What does this mean? This means if the central striker, if he just presses straight, straight at our center back, no problem, we can play to the other center back. Notice how I already positioned him behind number four. So number four, a flat pass goes in front of number five, and he can take a positive first-touch dribble. If the pass is behind him, then he has to face his own goal and waste some touches turning on the ball. 
So that's a rule for center backs always. When one of them has the ball, the other one, you have to drop off so the ball can be played in front of you. So we could do that there. We could beat that initial guy. Sometimes strikers won't press you in a straight line like that. They're smart. They'll cut the pass from center back to center back. So we get into the diamond. What diamond am I seeing here? I definitely see one. I see this one. Bang, 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 bang. There it is. There it is. Four V2 diamond. Beautiful. Now this striker, he might be coming, but you know, you have maybe a second. Maybe this one cam is pressing forward, but you have a second. You have a little bit of time to get a few passes off and try to work this 4v2 diamond. Uh, like the most common situation here, maybe this winger, he presses the ball, presses the center back, leaves the outside back in the cover shadow. The line three pass, this pass here still seems a little dangerous, right? Because 10 and 11, they have a nice diagonal line. It's hard to hit this pass through and get it right. It's basically a trap. But if our DCM checks down and give the angle, we can go one touch, boop, and we can line three through them there, and we can play on through that 4v2. That was just one small example. Um, often, when you're switching the ball around the back, say the defense has shifted over like this, like so, and the ball is at your outside back. Maybe a transition happened and you just got the ball back. If you can quick enough, if you can quick enough, switch the ball around the back. Here, boom, center back drops off, striker presses, puts the ball in front of them, positive dribble here. Now, as the back line shifts over, they're shifting over, that line two pass, if our outside back can get wide, bang, it's much more of an option after that shift of play that we see there. Okay. Um, so no matter what offensive system you're running, I feel this is the key to look for. You say, like, how do teams, how do pro teams, how do they break the press? You know, it's these pro players, they don't have amazing awareness um, where they know where all 10 of their teammates are at the same time. They have ideas, they have systems, things they look for that make the game easier. So this is one of them. Rather than keeping track of everyone on your, your own team, all 10 of your teammates, you're just looking for a 4v2 diamond, becoming a member of that. And really then you're just looking at three of your teammates. Okay, um, let's go back over here um, and let's talk about breaking the block. Um, these are ways to create an alternate diamond on the other side of the field. How do you do this? You do this with an inverted fullback, an inverted winger, and a false nine. Now, you might have heard these terms before, and they sound kind of cool, like, oh, are you a winger? Are you an inverted winger? Ooh. But what does it mean? What is the purpose of these kind of hybrid positions where you play differently than where a position is supposed to. What's the purpose? I'll tell you a purpose. The purpose is to create this 4v2 diamond. So let's go back to this 4-1-4-1 press situation. All right, say we've uh, hit the ball here, boom, and the defense, they know what they're doing. They've shifted over. The winger has shifted. He's not biting on the ball. He's taking out the outside back. Maybe... Uh, one of their central mids was able to come in and cut the pass to the DCM, and we have two guys pressuring the ball here. All right, it's kind of hard to win the diamond here because it's no longer a 4v2. It's like a 4v3 with two other guys close away. But since we still have a 2v1 in the back, we can still switch play. Okay, so let's do that. Bang, bang. You have to have a keeper that's capable of playing quick two touch or one touch keeping the ball uh to the left of him as he receives that pass on his first touch all right now here we are on the other side of the field now you notice we don't have a diamond yet why not well it's because look we only have kind of three of the guys three of the guys in there um 
Now you might say, well, wait a minute, can't number six, can't our DCM on one side, can't he run over to the other side there? Well, he could, but this takes time. Uh, he's not going to be able to travel as fast as the ball travels. He's going to travel fast as he can run. And as fast as he can run is as fast as someone else can chase him and that other CM can come with him and it takes time. So really he's stuck on that diamond we were trying to create on the right side of the field, but he did take the player with him. So how do we truly uh, complete this diamond here on the left side? Because without a true diamond, maybe they only have one guy as a winger, but if he just presses at the right angle, he tries to leave both guys in the cover shadow, it can be very difficult for the center back to do so, to hit a pass, to hit a, uh, a pass to number two or number 10. All right, I'll tell you how we're going to solve this problem. We're going to move a player over to make it a true diamond shape. It sounds pretty simple. So here's my favorite idea. Um, when the ball is on the right side of the field, before we switch it, the weak side outside back, this guy, he comes inside the formation. This is what you call an inverted fullback. Now when he does that, the weak side winger can check down a little bit. So as we switch play, bang, bang, the winger comes down. Now we've created the diamond again. Now, it might be like a 4v1 diamond. This winger, he doesn't have a lot he can do. If he stays wide and takes away the line two pass, maybe presses him down, we just have an easy uh, you know, half turn up the middle pass here. Often, I think what will likely happen is this guy will drift across the middle um, as we they shift over from the first pass. And so then as you pass to him, he sees the outside back is here. He moves to that, but now, boom, the winger is checked in. So we just have an easy option down there. Now, if a good outside back on the other team might trail him and be able to take his turn away but this is where we have situations in the half term can our inverted fullback here can he break the line and can we play one touch back to him here these are things like that so what are other ways to get an extra guy into this shape so let's put attacking mid there let's put the winger back and let's put the full back back. Another way is to drop one of your midfielders in and kind of play as a dual DCM, as a dual pivot. So now there's two DCMs. This is a good thing to do if they're pressing you in like a 4-3-3 and they have three guys, so you can just have more guys close to the goal, more short-range passing options. So you see now, now we need someone to be the top of the diamond. Well, we have two obvious candidates, the winger and the striker, if the winger comes inside and checks down, completes the diamond, this is what we called an inverted winger doing so. And maybe he stays high to stretch out the back line. And our, where is their other outside back? He needs to get back into shape. Say our striker, he's playing offsides. Boom, he, explosive run, he checks back in all the way. This is playing as a false nine. When the striker comes back into formation, into a pocket of space to try to get the ball and get a free turn. Hopefully the center backs are not paying attention. Maybe they're not the most experienced and they let you go. Now on the back line, they're basically wasting a player. They have a 4v2. And if we were able to hit that split pass right to our striker and he can turn, now they're stepping to him delayed and he can do damage with through balls. Um, so you might have known about false nine it's a position messy made famous but how do you make it work well if it can exist to help create these diamonds that's what works so there it is these are the big ideas um staying plus one on the back line and trying to find a diamond trying to find this 4v2 diamond if you see it it can become a very simple structure to play through the other team it's flexible. You can fill in positions to make these diamonds with just people that are available. Uh, you can have a plan as your team. Okay, we always want to invert the fullback to make the diamond. Or if the players have high enough uh, tactical understanding, they could just do it improvised. They could just see, 
oh, like a the maybe the cam checks down on the inside as plays as the dual pivot, like we were saying, and then the striker realizes that space is open, and then he's like, I need to become a false nine. He checks back into the formation, if everyone has that understanding. So these are truly secrets that can just rip the game apart, make possessing the ball much, much easier. One final point, what do you do after you break the press, after you pass the ball successfully through this 4v2 diamond? You break lines. So real quick, uh, what am I talking about here? Breaking lines after we break the press. Let's just say, let's just start with, I don't know, maybe this situation here. And let's put the other team kind of back into shape. Okay, and maybe we've dropped down. Yeah, maybe something like this. Or we're playing an extra midfielder as a DCM. We play the ball out. Maybe the winger steps just like before. And we're able to play this inside-out pass. So, boom. We broke the press. We broke through this line. I'll try to... Basically, this line of the midfield here. We broke through them. Now, we're on the sideline, which isn't as good as in the middle of the field. But we still broke the line. Okay, so, like, what comes next? It's like, well, this guy could... He could just, you know, take it on the dribble... Uh, but dribbling is slow, and when you dribble, it gives a chance for these guys that you just beat to sprint back and catch you, and they can run faster than you because they're not dribbling a ball. Um, so we try to work the ball quickly by passing. Maybe a winger can invert and open up the space um, over here, a pass here for an inside-out run. Maybe the striker can check in, if the pass to our other midfielder is blocked and we can wall pass, bang, one touch, bang. So what do I mean by break lines? I mean by these other guys. I mean by these guys here, this DCM, this one, number six, this other midfielder here, number 10, this outside back. As soon as the press is broke, everyone will be watching the ball. They're not watching you anymore. You have an opportunity to explosively, boom, become an extra player in the offense. This is breaking a line as we see here. For example, like what if we played that wall pass as I'm saying here, and eight gets the ball. 11 has stayed wide, and the outside back has stayed with him. The center back sees that this midfielder has got the ball, and he's checking to them. Well, if this midfielder, as soon as we broke the press and played through the 4v2 diamond and got the ball to our outside back here, if he explosively started moving forward and got a little bit ahead of these recovering midfielders on this line, now he's a guy that no one is expecting. He's completely unaccounted for, and when we play the ball into the opening created by the center back stepping, he's in there. They didn't even know he was coming. Boom. That's a goal. All right. Peace out.